Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to RPT season number five, episode 58. It is June 2nd, our year of the Lord, 2021. <laughs> I'm your host, Chingo Blingo, with the Big Tamarindo, a.k.a. Little Patriot, homie. Post it up with the homie, producer Rob. I like it. The man that makes it all possible. Yes, sir. And today we are lighting up. I don't know if we're going to light up the prototype. Let's do the prototype. This is a Twin Candle Co. You can find them at Painted Tree and online. What's the website, Rob? TwinCandleCo.com. Get you some. This is a prototype because right now we're working on a collab. Yep. And that's Inside Scoop for all the fans. Um, I am a stand-up comedian. Uh, some of y'all know me from the rapping days, you know, back when I was AKA Little Orchata, AKA Puffin' on the Churro, AKA Come On Man, Swang in the Lane, Dripping the Paint, You Know the Thing, Come On Man. That should be the new single. Freedom of Speech Tour dates. I'm headed to a city near you, man. Uh, it is like a freedom rally slash comedy show. July 14th, Ontario, California. July 15th, All My Patriots, I Will See You in Oxnard, California. August 11th, all my freedom loving Californians. I will see you, Irvine, California. Uh, August 18th, San Jose. August 27th through the 29th, Denver, Colorado. Brea, California. September 15th. Then we hit Texas, man. October 7th through the 10th, Addison, Texas. San Anto, October 14th through the 16th. And then my Houston date got pushed back to November 5th through the 7th. It's going to be a sellout. It's going to be gangbusters. Come mm. on, man. You know the thing. I like it. Uh, you want to grab that corner of the tripod and pull it towards you a little bit so you're a little more centered? See, more on. This one right here? Yeah. Oh. Got you a little out of... Out of a little too much. A little more. Perfecto. Orale. Got to make sure you're nice and centered for everybody. What's up, everyone? Yeah, because yeah, we're, uh, we're going to drop some knowledge today, man. So Yeah. We should, we should say, too, before you get into it, because mm -hmm. then you're going to drop knowledge, uh, patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales, right? This is a public episode. If you don't know... There's three tiers to the Patreon, right? So the mid tier has the Chingo chats, which people ask about. It's only it's only for the the mid level and above tiers. But every month after that month's uh, previous month's podcast have released, we release them for the entry level tier. Mm -hmm. For the entry level TIA, that means for everybody. So yeah. if you sign up to the to the entry level one and you don't get them immediately, you're gonna get like for instance today is the second. Mm -hmm. So all of the May ones will be available to the patrons who are on the entry level tier, and then the exclusive ones that are on the mid level and above will only be for those for June. We need to make a, a meme of Rob telling you that he's gonna dump old episodes on on the lower tier. Just be like, <laughs> I'm a generous god. <laughs> Man, I just took a shower, bro. So I, I'm in this bitch. Oh, still, word. Still steamy coming in here. Irish Spring. I was Z wondering. Zest fully clean. You're like, why is this motherfucker face so sweaty? I, I was wondering why, because it feels good in here. And you were like, I don't know if we need this fan. Ah, we don't need it. I'm running hot, man. I'm drinking. This is my second cup of coffee. It is. And it's steaming as fuck. You don't like cold brew or what? Man, I need to buy some. We need to re up from uh, Jackson's Brew. Gee. But don't yeah. worry about that. Uh, but yeah, man, shout out to the patrons. Been meeting a lot of patrons, brother. Yeah. In person. Uh, we just did a pop up. And it's, it's really cool to put a face to the patron man like people come up like hey man thank you for what you're doing dog hey little patriot what's up homie what's up big dog and then they're like rpt por vida homie and then i'm like oh that's what's up that is what's up the the, the newest chingo chat that went up was from um corpus so you're talking about how many people we saw there and how you were hearing things from the crowd was that the first time so far since you've been rpt hey <laughs> 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 and I'm like, all right, man, I brought jokes, man, relax. We can talk about it afterwards. Yeah, for sure. Would that be the first show you think since you started the Freedom of Speech tour or getting back on the road that you're starting to hear things from the podcast, that show, live shows? Man, look, Corpus Christi, Texas was over a bunt, like, I don't know what the word is, but like a lot of motherfuckers. How about that? Okay. A lot of motherfuckers are like, hey, man, people need to wake up. Thank you for sticking your neck out. Or they'd be like... I ain't like Trump either at first, but look at this bullshit we got now. All this debt, they spending trillions, inflation coming. It's crisis on top of crisis on top of crisis. I mean, it's like, like for one, the border, it's like a dam. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like water coming out the dam. And they're like, hey, man, like the ranchers are having to shut down their ranches. CNN's cameras must have broken. CNN must not have the budget to send somebody to Del Rio, Texas, to talk to the people and see what's really going on. So the stuff that we're saying, we're hearing the feedback, like at the pop-ups, mm -hmm. at the shows, people are just, it's overwhelming. Like, you know, when I came out the Trump closet, 
I thought I was going to just have my shows just be like nothing but protesters and people saying, you hate your own. How can you hate your own? How can you back a man that call us rapists? And it's like, he ain't call all of us rapists. And right now, they they literally catching some rapists. A they catching them. MS-13. They catching some sex offenders. They catching uh, real deal rapists. I'm not saying everybody that's getting caught at the border is, is a rapist. Yeah. but and they're not all Mexican. They're not all from Mexico. No, man, they're catching people from Romania, uh, Yemen. I mean, you name it. Uh, even, sh- you know, shout out to the Cubans. You know what, they're escaping. They're getting away from that communism, <clears throat> along with Venezuelans. Um, they The Dems probably don't want them coming in because you know how they're going to vote. So uh, Jorge Ventura, which I'm looking forward to getting him on the podcast, hopefully in the near yeah. future, he had, a, he had a lot of the good exclusive content that, was, uh, that went viral over the last, you know, weekend and the last couple of days. And he had a family, a Puerto, or no, Venezuelan family, mm-hmm. who, I don't know if you saw that one, but it was like a dad and the family, and the dad was very well-spoken, and was just saying how you were leaving that socialist society mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because it, it ain't it, basically, <clears throat> in layman's terms. And he went into, like, why it ain't it, and if you think it's it and you're here, I advise you to go over there and check it out for yourself. We should clip that little piece, because yeah. uh, a lot of people, man, it, it's those images are so uncomfortable that people might not even make it to that part of the video, seeing the 80-year-old woman being carried over someone's shoulder, um, the six-month-olds. Did you see the newest one? It's like a five-year-old boy. They dumped him off with a teddy no bear. Se See, si, bon van. Hey, Fuck, dude. hey. Because the smugglers, when they go to you know Central America to, to encourage people to, hey, man, give me some money. I'm going to take your kid. They're telling the parents, listen, the way the rules are now, kids get through easily we would advise you that now is the time with the biden administration send your kids first then they'll get in the system and then we'll worry about you later so these poor parents are desperate and you know you got to be very desperate to send your child alone with some grown-ass men on a long dangerous journey you know what i mean with so many variables and uh, God forbid, you know, some very uh, bad things happening to women and kids. Dude, yeah. Uh, not trying to make a light of it. Not trying to make a joke out of it. I have a hard time. But <laughs> I have a hard time. Right? I have a hard time. This morning I dropped the kids off at summer camp. I have a hard time dropping them off at camp. Oh, man. 100. Keeping it 100. I mean, shit. I don't let, like, I don't be letting my 12 year old spend the night places no no definitely don't do that um and you know these camps are like whether they're church run or they're like very well organized and you know that they're like a staple in the community it's still tough yeah it could be a good church all you need is that one that one asshole yeah Um, but that was a bummer video man and i think i read that article too um he it said that he had family i don't know if it was parents talking about the five-year-old yeah the five-year-old had family in the state so uh, supposedly supposedly that's that's what you don't know that the 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 adults that left him there Mm -hmm. that was their excuse but what we're hearing you know from the sources, from the research, you know, CNN might not tell y'all this, but there's people down there in Del Rio. We get direct messages. We got invited. They sent a flyer. Uh, they're going to do like a community, like a little town hall of some sort. But anyway, what we're hearing is that they're encouraging the parents to send their kids first. So when people say, oh, Chingo, it's been happening, man. Ain't nothing new. It's been happening. Ain't nothing new. Okay, so you're telling me that the cartels have always been involved and they've always been in charge of traffic. I mean, smuggling people. Is that what you're telling me? Are you telling me that, you know, it's always been Venezuelans because Venezuela was, was one of the richest countries up until recently. You know, you're telling me it's always been Romanians in groups, you know, and so on. It's apples and oranges. Like people, either they, either like, uh, I don't know if you remember Boys in the Hood, but there's a scene where Ice Cube says, either they don't care, they don't show, or don't know what happens in the hood. And either y'all don't care, y'all don't show, or y'all don't know what happens on the border. Because people either they like choose to be ignorant, or they're blind, or it's like uh, oblivious by choice. But mm-hmm. it gets really disheartening when you're trying to spread the word, and the pushback you're getting is, like, I, I showed the clip of the Venezuelans, the one with the father saying, like, hey, y'all, socialism ain't it. That's yeah. what we're getting away from. And y'all need to chill out and don't bring that shit here. People saying, oh, those are crisis actors, man. That ain't real. That's what? staged. They're saying it's staged propaganda. And I'm like, you're telling me 
that they just did a whole skit. You telling me this ain't a real Venezuelan accent? You telling me these ain't real Border Patrol? Or you telling me the Border Patrol's in on the skit? You tell me they didn't just get out of the water? And who's putting this skit together? Is it is it the right? Is it conservatives trying to scare you? Is it Republicans trying to make Biden look bad? Where are you getting these ideas, bro? Like, talk to the people on the border. People in Del Rio. Uh, there's a lady who um, is like friend of the family. They live in Del Rio. Her husband works out of town often. There's been times when she comes home and her fridge is empty. Mm. So they they coming all up in your house. Um, ranchers having to shut down their ranches. It's too much traffic going through their property. Mm. So that's just one crisis of many. You got, I mean, it's just like, it's like Biden is trying to hurry up and cause as many crises as possible. I yeah. mean, you got, you got the pandemic. Now they talking about this. Uh, they want to call it a lab leak. Because they want to soften the blow. They don't want to call it a man-made bioweapon funded by U.S. tax dollars. Tony Fauci in 2017 rammed it through the uh, Trump administration behind Trump and, and their, their back through a lower, level, a lower level person, which I don't have the name offhand. But, um, you know, Obama told him to stop playing with them viruses in 2014. He shut down the program. I don't know who sent them. Like, bitch, you better get reinstate this program. I mean, you have the United States getting in more and more debt. I think China already owns like a trillion dollars of our debt. And the interest we're paying on the debt funds their military. So it's a little, it's damn near checkmate. Mm. It's almost like they playing chess like with us like this. Or like, you know, like when you playing Connect Four with a three-year-old? Yep, yep, yep. It's like, andale, mija. Sigues tú. Oh, papi. And it's like, cuéntalos. Cuatro. Andale. Ya gané. You and cheated, it, daddy. No, papi. That's... That's what's happening because over there in China, they're so under control. They're so regimented. You know, they knew that when it leaked, quote unquote, air quotes, they knew that they're so regimented over there that they knew they were going to be able to contain it. They had a head start. They had a good 60 days to, um, you know, send out some misinformation, cover it up, like had time to maybe prepare they can get a vaccine going first suck up all the ppp um let people from wuhan not go into the rest of china but fly out to milan and new york and la and spread it seed it throw it around mix it up and um and meanwhile we're having we're now we're printing up more money now they they counting ballots no they're um what's the word they're is it analyzing I, I, I want to use the proper word, but you got this ballot thing happening, mm -hmm. this forensic audit where people are like, Chingo, they're spending taxpayers' dollars. It's costing like the state of Arizona like $6 million to go back in, and they already counted them. Rachel Maddow told me. <laughs> and I think like, it's a million. And in comparison to like, we were talking about, you know, the deficit or whatever, you're talking about $6 trillion, and people are complaining on the left about a million. Whatever it is, guess what else costs taxpayer money? Those dumb, dumb onion yeah. machines that was also purchased with taxpayer dollar, and motherfuckers ain't allowed to go in and see what's going on there. They haven't even got to the canvassing, like go check addresses. That's when the real fun happens. Right now, they just going through and seeing how many of these ballots are not folded right, how many of them are photocopies, how many of these people don't even live in that state, how many of these people ain't even alive. Like just going through them, and it's taking time. But it's just a lame, a lame excuse to be like, uh, 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 Chingo, there isn't, you know, kids been in cages. There is no crisis. Uh, inflation is Trump's fault somehow. Somehow. You know, and it's funny that people will, will just continue the same. So the dude's out of office. We're learning new things about everything that's happened post-Biden, uh, right? Like he's in, we're, it's going, the wheels are turning. Mm -hmm. But the mindset of let's still blame the orange man has mm. not left. It's still at the forefront of the people's minds. <clears throat> Mental health, bro. That TDS is so strong. That Trump derangement syndrome is so strong that, I mean, damn, bro. They got people. I mean, you have, you have young, healthy people in their 20s yeah. lining up for the jab. And it's like, um, you know you're in your 20s, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then, you know, you already got the jab. Why are you still wearing your mask in the store? Well, because I don't want to be confused as one of them, you know, crazy people that's going to raise hell over a mask 
with a little Patriot hat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like like you, Chingo Bling, walking in H-E-B. Like, I wish a motherfucker would. Tell me, <laughs> El Patriot. Put my mask on. I just put my headphones on. I'm like, bitch, I don't hear nothing. <laughs> I don't know nothing about nothing. I don't know shit about fuck. Yeah. Rob come in with his beard. Like, bitch, I wish you would. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I don't say nothing to nobody. Nobody says nothing to me. And we're cool. Wish a motherfucker would. Tell me to put my <clears throat> mask on. Yeah, right. So it's just a lot of derangement, man. Like, um, As a matter of fact, we dropped the kids off at camp this morning, right? And we were the first ones there. And as, soon as, as we were walking out, there was another mom. Uh, that was walk, getting out of her car with her kid, and the kid already had the mask on. And I just, just being a good citizen, I thought I was like, "Hey, he doesn't have to wear that in there." And she's <gasps> like, "Oh, really?" And she was like, "Yeah." She didn't have a mask on, but he did, which I found odd. Uh-huh. And she was like, "Oh, takes it right off, put it in his backpack." She's like, "Thanks." So I was like, "Okay." I mean, is it weird to say that? Like, okay, I know. I, I don't know. Was it that she was scared, or I, maybe I know how she voted, or how she thinks? I don't know. I thought it was just a funny interaction because at first she looked at me like. Really? Like, first she was surprised I said that, and then she was, like, happy I said it. Mm. Yeah, it's no telling. There's no telling if she wanted to virtue signal. <laughs> if she didn't want to be confused as a little trumper, trumpet, trumpety, trumper, trumpet. <laughs> um, yeah, dog. Well, if, to, stay on that, to stay on that same subject, <clears throat> um, I have a, a clip here from one of your favorite shows, The okay. View. Oh, yeah, The View. Yeah. Um, okay. When's the last time you guys watched that? I've only seen like a couple little clips here and there. It, it's the last one I saw is they were up there talking about something ridiculous. It was something that to me was so like, how can you even argue the other side? I can't even remember what it was. <laughs> All right. So they're kind of, they're talking about the leak. So we're calling it the lab. Oh <clears throat> man, let me see this. So I'm going to cue it about halfway through because uh, the first lady, Sarah, what's her face? Didn't really have too much to say oh my God. but i want to see what you think about it we'll live react right. joy is it fair to criticize fauci for not knowing the exact answer when everyone wanted it <laughs> no i mean you know this anti-science crowd on the right with the with trump has been criticizing fauci from the giddy app as if he's the some giddy-app. kind of oracle of delphi instead of a scientist you know um, the man uh, gets the facts, gets the information, and then adjusts what he says to people. What do they expect from him? And, you know, Trump was, re- was blaming the Chinese from the beginning because he was using them as scapegoats. Mm. If it happens to be true that it comes from <laughs> Wuhan, well... Uh, wh- uh, what is this, an ad? Is it a goddamn Or is my wife? Well, that was just a lucky break on his part because uh, he took a guess, uh. in my opinion. <sighs> Sonny, any... Investigation. Anything on, this on anything on Joy before we move on to Sunny? What's her face? First of all, I, how can I get the word out that the view ain't it? Um, <laughs> if if you're only watching the view, first of all, I didn't know Whoopi Goldberg had a tattoo on her right shoulder. I didn't either. But um, if you're basing your, I've made the mistake in the past where you're trying to get your little current events and shit from oh i'm just gonna turn on abc and you know these people they keep it light this daytime it's a group of women and they're just gonna chit chat um it's very it's very counterproductive i mean you gotta like diversify your sources and this ain't it because it's definitely coming through some puppets through some parrots yeah through a big mainstream conglomerate abc is owned by disney um it's unfortunate that maybe a lot of um what's the word like the midday housewife crowd lets this information seep in and they're being assigned an opinion. The way they frame things is way off. Like if you care about information and facts and truth and real data and real science, you might want to listen to somebody like Dr. Peter Navarro, who's been going at Fauci from the jump. Uh, Dr. Peter Navarro was uh, in the Trump cabinet. I think he's like an economics guy, but Right now, he's he's busy breaking down the data of the ballots and all that kind of stuff, you know, stopping the steal. <laughs> and and from the jump, they were they were calling this a pandemic in January. The World Health Organization didn't call it a pandemic till March 11th. So it's not l- a lucky guess the way Joy Behar is saying it. It's not Trump's trying to scapegoat. Like, don't put that out there, lady. Don't say, oh, Trump got lucky because he was just trying to blame Chinese from the jump because he don't like the Chinese people. It's like, no, they know how the CCP works. They knew that the first three cases came from workers at the Wuhan lab. So Occam's Razor is going to tell you, if it started in Wuhan, yeah, maybe it could have been from the wet market, 
But to this date, they have not been able to find the animal that carried it, quote unquote, right. that transferred it to humans. They've <clears throat> checked thousands of animals over there. And typically, you want to go where patient zero is, right? And mm-hmm. we wondered that, and then we kind of figured it out, and it's almost like we ignored it. Yeah, no, it's definitely some kind of cover up because China's been known since like the end of 2019. You know, they were already trying to figure out how they were going to ride this wave and and capitalize off of it. Um, do you, you remember? Do you remember? I, I'm not sorry to interrupt, but mm-hmm. do you remember since we're talking about the ladies that watch this show, right? On, on a regular national level, mm-hmm. we're talking about house moms for the most part, right? We're talking yeah, about people and their husbands, you know, <laughs> like me, and their husbands that might have the time. How did Trump do with how? Do you remember? I couldn't remember the stat whether he did really well or they were saying that he did poorly with uh, middle aged, what was it, middle aged white women or stay at home moms or something like that? Do you remember that stat? Um, I really, I really don't remember. Because I, I thought he did, I thought they were saying he did poorly, mm-hmm. and but in reality, he did well. Mm. So it makes me wonder, and maybe, you know, patrons let us know or listeners let us know uh, if. The ratings of the show just are, are a lot less than they're alluding to, and they're just keeping it on because of, I don't know, the cast or whatever the hell, um, or it really is having an effect on those people that watch the show midday, mid-morning, and they're passing it along at the yoga dates or at the play dates or whatever, and that's how these, you know, mm-hmm. the real misinformation spreads. Yeah. Oh, man. That's a great way to put it, Rob. That's the real misinformation right there. And so I would argue that The View is just contributing to this noise. It's not the signal. They're not giving you signal. They're not saying, look, man, here's the footnote. This is, this is the actual thing. They're speculating. They're mind reading. They're saying Trump got lucky. Uh, Trump wants to scapegoat Asians. Um, that's what he does. He's divisive. Blah, 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 blah. Hatred, hatred. Well, let's Ra- see, racist. Let's xenophobic. See see, yeah, fill in in quotes any, any uh, obic or... Yeah, and be, beware, of the, beware of people that throw around this xenophobic term because... While America has become so politically correct throughout the years, been so like woke and quick to accuse somebody of being xenophobic, um, what happens is we shoot ourselves in the foot because in the process of trying to ask questions and arrive at the truth, we get sidetracked with like, for example, we need to shut down flights from Wuhan. We need to shut down all incoming flights from China. We need a travel ban from China. (gasps) racist xenophobic stop hating on asians it's like bro this ain't got nothing to do with that we're trying to contain this thing so we could buy some time and save some lives yeah no 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 you're just a hater and all this woke stuff you you killing people you literally killing people throwing around this bullshit so let's see what other noise they got coming out their mouth politicized uh what's the takeaway for you here yeah Well, I think it will be highly politicized because, as Joy just referenced, you know, the prior administration bungled, um, you know, the handling of of the pandemic. There's just no question about it. Uh, The prior administration hid a lot of information from uh, United States citizens. The the prior administration, you know, uh, just bungled, you know. Oh, any any b- vaccine rollout. They had no plans. They they didn't Bitch. follow the Obama's you know infectious disease Obama. plans. They 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 hampered uh, scientists from sharing information. He was trafficking in you <laughs> know saying things like you so know you blatantly. could swallow bleach and and and, 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 and <laughs> you still uh, throwing a bleach so hoax. I, I think that oh it will God. be highly politicized. But I also Jesus and, and I think if you speak to experts in vinyl genome uh, viral genome evolution, ben they Nick determined that this is uh, it's almost certainly was not engineered as a bioweapon like uh, senator tom cotton seems to be pushing uh, it, hey. it probably was natural occurring oh, but there is bro. still need of, right. of more investigation most viewed morning show here what or we, day is, show. Oh, we don't know 100 percent. we don't know 100 percent. pause and this science is pause a- this <laughs> y'all hate trump so much that y'all covering for the ccp it's Y'all not even worth playing the rest of it, honestly. Yeah, man, look, this might have to be a recurring segment where we go and check in on, on The View. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> As an ex-View watcher, back when I was a Mandilon, back before I was known as AKA Little Patriot, uh, I mean, they're lying. They're saying that, oh, we it doesn't appear to be man-made. Uh, no, it is absolutely... Um, even even the, the, the scientists that have that have had to defect from China 
are like, yeah, we was working on that. And guess who paid for it? American taxpayer dollars. Anthony, Dr. Anthony Fauci signed the check that went over there through the NIH or what have you. That's what they needed to buy the equipment to do gain of function research. I don't know if people from The View ever mentioned, like, nah, bitch, you know, the proof is in the bat soup. There was no bat soup. <clears throat> but the whole thing, too, is just like uh, no plan, no rollout, no vaccine up weird program. Shit, yeah. But also, it's just not true. Like, it was How Operation Warp Seed not a thing? He had, yeah, exactly. That's one of the many plans. That's what they were already vaccinating up to a million people um, a day. And the ph- I think the pharmaceutical companies didn't announce that they had it done and ready to go until Biden went in office. They're like, oh shit, hey, we got it. It, you know, the fact she kept using the word bungled too. I was like, what? Bung- it- First of all, that lady need to worry about her nose job. <laughs> her nose looking like Michael Jackson. Number two, I think all of them need some, some chorizo. All of them need some D. I don't know who, I don't know, the, you know what I'm saying? I don't know who they dating, who they married to, uh, but um, they need to chill out and get off the boo-boo. Yeah, I had to bring it up just because it, I mean, again, we're talking about an audience of their magnitude, if it is still as big as they say it is, and the people that watch it, and how they're going to carry that information around from, you know, house to house and play date to play date, depending on, you know, who you think watches that show the most, and it's just not true. You know, there's lies, there's propaganda, and then there's that shit. Yeah, I, ne- I never used to realize, like, well, see, I guess back then, I guess Trump was in office. Yeah, Trump was in office back when we'd watch it from time to time. And um, now, more than ever, I feel like the topics at hand and the, the crises at hand, the issues at hand, the fact that, you know, we're dealing with this pandemic, some schools ain't open, they talking about vaccine passports, they talking about they want all the kids vac- vaccinated before they go back into school, uh, you know, moms are wondering, is my kid going to have to wear a mask next year? Mm -hmm. People wondering, okay, is there another pandemic going to come? How many more variants? Are y'all dropping them like mixtapes? Are y'all giving us the mild bug first? And then y'all going to hit us with the extra mild and then the spicy? Like right now, you know, between the border crisis, between the, the value of the dollar and inflation, all this crap, it's like, to me, it's dangerous that they're on there still repeating old hoaxes they're on there talking about um uh, he ain't had no plan uh, uh they talking about taking uh bleach shots taking a little sip of bleach and it's like bitch that shit been debunked already yeah. all that was a, a they were framing him it was a hoax and check this out man before i forget there's a clip i saw on instagram i'm gonna repost it on the what did he said page if i haven't already but they were interviewing it was a man on the street they were stopping people. They probably filmed it maybe like Friday or something because it was about Memorial Day weekend. Mm. And they're asking little couples, random people, like young millennials, like, hey, how do you feel about Memorial Day? Um, it was very well edited because it cuts to like a different person. It's like, do you know what Mem- Memorial Day stands for? Mm. And they're like, um, I used to know, isn't it? Right. Like about, and then they cut to someone else and they're like, hey, um, a lot of people think that we should get rid of Memorial Day. Or how do you feel about Memorial Day? They're like, well, I think it celebrates colonialism and... Imperialism. Imperialism. <laughs> yeah. And those are not good things. And I'm like, holy crap. I see a lot of these comments on my page from Rasa that's been brainwashed. I, I, please hold your thought. But I think I saw the same one. Because didn't that guy say that until he took a gender studies class... At the end, yeah. Yeah, he didn't he's see like, things that way. Yeah, he's like, I never really used to like be like this but i took a couple i went to college yeah yeah, yeah. And took a couple gender studies class and now i'm like f america <laughs> and then he like <laughs> that's where it ends and then he signs a fake petition because a dude has a, he's like oh i have this petition here where we're trying to get the federal government to undo memorial day as a federal holiday mm-hmm. and maybe replace it to mean something else and it's a coincidence you know that joe biden put out a proclamation um on memorial day talking about the 100 year anniversary of what happened in Tulsa which is is horrible what happened in Tulsa I'm not well versed I'm I don't understand it completely but from what I understand it was called Black Wall Street in Tulsa and it was like uh black owned businesses where they were just independent autonomous you know being capitalists making it happen they probably had black banks 
um, doing loans and it was just prosperity happening. And supposedly it was like a quote unquote angry white mob. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they, it was bombing. Basically they totally destroyed that whole, um, uh, you know, all those businesses, all those lives and um, terrorize those people. So any type of, it's, it's kind of hard to, I guess, fix and undo. Like no matter how much you do, it's kind of like, it's not enough. You know what I mean? Because how do you, how do you rectify that? But anyway, Biden decided to basically make Memorial Day in a way, like some would argue like, mm-hmm. oh, you're trying to make it. It's almost like a Marxist playbook where it's like, <laughs> I know America stands for this. And I know that Memorial Day is for, you know, fallen American soldiers defending the Constitution that took an oath and protect our freedoms. But we're going to focus on this, which shows how bad and evil America is and how racist white people are. And we're going we're gonna to commemorate this on the same day to almost rebrand in essence. So if you were a cultural Marxist, that's probably what you would want to do. You would want to maybe put out tweets that don't acknowledge what Memorial Day is about. You might want to just say, keep cool this weekend, folks, or have enjoy your long weekend. Meanwhile, you're doing this proclamation. So it's that one's tricky because the Tulsa thing was super fucked up. And, uh, you know, but it's like the timing of it. It's like, bro, don't put out a bullshit tweet. And then we see this clip where a lot of people are like, yeah, I think it would be good to rebrand what Memorial Day is about because it's all about sending. Like the comments I saw on my Facebook when I posted about um, Memorial Day. Let me guess. Is it just that uh, the U.S. has always been in senseless wars kind of thing? It was basically like those soldiers got played. Um, you know, the, the punk ass elite that run this country just sent them off to die for nothing. Um America's evil. Uh, what about this is stolen land? Mm. How about we remember the indigenous that also, blah, 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 blah. They always want to bring back stolen land and no matter what argument it is. Like, bro, we in 2021, we trying to figure out how this dollar is not going to collapse because it's already like, like one of the best arguments for crypto is like, you know, the dollar ain't shit. <laughs> you know, or the dollar is just, it's whatever. It's like this made up, thing it's like we're agreeing this value on this piece of paper and we're printing more and it's lowering the value of the piece of paper in your hand and your paycheck might not be worth the same amount you know what i mean it's almost like you getting a pay cut just yeah. because the dollar ain't worth as much which is kind of true yeah and, and they said for the first time ever uh during trump your your paycheck was worth 30 percent more just because of you know the way he had us you know energy independent and all this other crap i'm not an economist but um, but, but when, yeah. When you listen to Peter Schiff, I don't. Do you have, have you ever listened to Peter Schiff? Uh, only a couple times. Okay, I listen to his podcast pretty regularly, and you know he he's as far in the direction of uh, crypto ain't shit, and you're you gotta need to fuck with gold because what are you doing, right? And he breaks it down in a way that only Peter Schiff could. If it wasn't for how bullish he is on on that, especially uh, specifically the the crypto thing, you you might see him on TV, but they'd never put him on MSNBC, or he would never uh, debate uh, what's his name, what's his name, Kramer, uh, what the, whatever the Mad Money guy, mm. because for whatever reason they're super crypto focused. Mm. Like they have people that have segments all the time on cryptocurrencies on MSNBC and and the money exchange shows and all that shit. And uh, I don't know, personally, like, I hear people make jokes about it all the time, but I know people that are super serious about crypto. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know a lot of people. Yeah, I, 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 know, I know a fair amount. NFTs, too. Uh, yeah. My homeboy last night was telling me about this NFT stuff. And it's just like, okay, it, it almost sounds like any Ponzi scheme you've ever You got bit of. by a mosquito? Yeah. You? Man, me too, bro. Yeah, they're fucking bad. This is bad. a RPT exclusive. <laughs> uh, people that tune in, y'all get to know all the behind the scenes. Yeah, if you watch the video, well, it's just nonstop. It's been raining for two fucking weeks. And it's gonna non-stop. rain all week still this week. Uta madre. And the mosquitoes are literally the size of like this mouse. They got backpacks on. I seen one with a skateboard. Legit. Talking shit with a with a with a cigarette out of his mouth. Like, yeah. bitch, you can't ban this new port. He said, bitch. Do something. Yeah. They can't ban this new yeah, port. He had a pack of menthols in his sleeve. He had a sleeve rolled up. Anyway. Uh no, man. But so I personally I haven't looked into it other than Years ago, like I said, seven, eight years ago when I got that Coinbase account, bought a little bit of Bitcoin. Is that yours? Is it, who's, whose alarm is that? Hold on, let me check this. Bro, let me find out. Someone's trying, trying to <laughs> take somebody's car. Fuck that. Hold on. 
We got an exclusive here again on the cameras. Oh, okay. Wait, I see Muddy Soul going out there. Oh, all right. See, it's stuck. We cool. All right. Um. Anyway, let me, I say all that to say this. I don't. I'm not convinced. And again, like I said, that, that goes from somebody that doesn't know a shit ton about it. But how do you, you knowing just as many people, if not more, they're super about it? What are your thoughts on crypto? Um. Are you convinced? Are you going to take a neck your next? You know. Uh, you know, dis- disposable income amount that you could invest in something, yeah. anything, and put yeah. it towards crypto? Yeah, I'm not going to put the nest egg in there. No, no, no. But but uh, you, you do want to diversify. And, you know, like I said, one of the best arguments for crypto is is when they, you know, is when motherfuckers say, you know, the dollar is volatile. You know, there's so many variables based around the dollar. For example, when you'd go down to Mexico... And you and your cousins wanted to go cruising downtown, like hop in the car and waste gas and, you know, go in circles, playing your music with all the other teenagers. They look at you because you're from El Otro Lado. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, this Pemex ain't cheap. You got dollars. We got pesos. Yeah. So what you got on the gas? Because right. I know your dad going to chunk you $20. It's true. Um, that's absolutely what happens. I know a lot of people can relate. Like, bitch, you got dollars. Mm-hmm. We got pesos. It's only one gas station. It's called Pemex. There's no fucking free market competition. It's all nationalized. So the peso, you don't want the dollar to become the peso. No. And uh, it, right now, man, just from what I'm hearing about, you know, I'm very fascinated with economics because it plays a role in everything. And... Um, you know what I'm hearing about, like the gross national product and the amount of debt we're taking on. They're saying we're in more debt now than I think World War Two or some shit. Just post World War Two, yeah. Post World War Two, and here's another. Speaking of World War Two, here's another statistic: if you add up all the fentanyl deaths, right, which come from China, mm, how are we tying this together? Let's just call it the fentanyl war, right? Okay. If you add up the deaths. From from the fentanyl war, let's call it, let's frame it that way. All right, all right. You have American casualties in the fentanyl war. You add that up with the bio weapon war. Let's just call it, you know, you know, the pandemic. Add those up. Now you have more deaths. Soon, I think that number is creeping up on the amount of deaths we had in World War II, which was the bloodiest war for Americans. Is where we lost more than Vietnam, World War One, etc. Put together. So currently, China is set. See, I got to watch what I say. This, this is a public episode. Let's just say if you frame it that way, that, uh, you know, fentanyl gets shipped from China to Mexico to the cartels, from the cartels up here, killing upwards of like 70,000 Americans a year. Add that up to the, uh, the other deaths we had. What is it? 600,000 from mm-hmm. El Virus. And we creeping up on World War II numbers. And this is all current day all under the views nose, all up under uh, Joy Bayar's nose and Whoopi Goldberg's nose and the other lady, Sonny Hostin, up there with her fake nose talking about, <laughs> talking about um, he was telling people drink bleach and he bungled it and he ain't had no plan. And that's why we had to get Orange Man bat out. And that's why we got this really cool, smart, young, handsome man named Joe Biden who can ride a bike and he loves ice cream. And, 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 um, and thankfully, we have him here at the helm because he has a plan. And no world leaders are laughing at Joe Biden the way they laughed at Trump. If anything, we should call him Bungled Biden because he does wow. everything so clumsily. Sound like you said bung hole. <laughs> <laughs> you a Beavis and Butthead fan? Oh man, I had a Beavis nice. and Butthead Halloween mask. I had Beavis and Butthead uh, boxers. Nice. Um, yeah, TPA my bung hole. Yeah, I had. I was a big fan of a Ren and Stimpy, Beavis and Butthead, and that type of humor. So uh, totally off subject, but real quick, I just saw an ad for um, so Modoc. It's a Marvel character. He's like a Marvel villain, uh-huh. but they made it. It's a Hulu. Car, it's a Hulu exclusive cartoon. Patton Oswalt plays the voice of Oswalt, uh, of uh, Modoc. Okay, and it seems really like adultish. Like it seems like because Modoc is like I forgot. It's an acronym, but it's like a, It's just like basically an evil brain is what he is, mm. and he's like trying to be an evil villain brain while trying to raise a family. Also, mm. so I, it seemed pretty funny. Almost like old school cartoon network uh adult swim kind of cartoon mm-hmm. so i don't know if you're into that kind of stuff are they going to be doing like a trans parade in the middle of the uh cartoon didn't blues clues do some shit like that <sighs> they did they did blues clues that is a, a show designed for toddlers and they did a whole segment you saw the video i saw yeah i couldn't really i was just like skipping through it and it's like 
Hooray, hooray. Look at this look at this float on this parade. It's a happy family, you know, two moms, yeah. which is a reality. There's there's lots of healthy, happy families with, you know, two dads and two moms and you know, um I'm sure kids can grow up loved and happy and they're probably in a better situation with a loving family than being in it, going from shelter to shelter in, in the system. Um or if they what's the word, in vitro, whatever. Yeah. I'm not trying to hate on people's uh, lifestyle choices however <laughs> however of all the things you could have put in a cartoon designed for toddlers right these aren't high school kids these aren't college professors showing an animation film to college kids this is what is that three to five year olds yeah or what have you and they really put i mean watching that segment of that cartoon it was as if i walked into target in uh pride month i mean it was just Everything was a rainbow. You walked into Target during Pride Month? No. Man, I almost feel like all these products... I boycotted Target. A la madre. Fucking... In, forever? Y- yeah, yeah. Fuck that. What happened with Target? I tell, Well, maybe I didn't tell you where... Similar to the Xfinity experience, where they were like... He, was, he called the cop across the store. I walked in and the greeter lady was like... Was like a mask. Like some places were doing. And then if you said no, they would just kind of leave you alone. And I was like, no thanks. And then I just kept walking, right? And she's like, sir, you need a mask to be in the store. And she's like, sir... Sir, sir yelled really loud and I turned around and she's like you need a master shop in the store and then i said well good thing i'm just window shopping and i kept walking <laughs> <laughs> but she yelled and that's what gets me when they yell at me across the store i'm like what are you doing and she pulls her mask off to yell sir <laughs> yeah so i was like i'm never coming back she had it on sir yeah sir. she did Man, yeah. That, that was a good line bro thank you thank you bitch i'm just window shopping <laughs> and then you strolled off i just kept I'm going a window shopper <laughs> um Okay, so look, we had to go to Target to get one of those six-foot fold-out tables because we had a pop-up. Right. Man, why has the price of everything gone up? Bro, first we went to Target, right? I, me and my 12-year-old. Everywhere you look, again, we ain't got no beefs with the gay community. But <laughs> but everything in the store was every, every end cap, every aisle from the bottom to the top from the left to the right everything had a rainbow on it what? i mean like my i was like fuck did i did i take acid and, for, <laughs> and forgot and i'm just like holy cow all the shirts i mean it was like well june's gay pride month right yeah exactly yeah okay okay just, but here's my thing i was making sure yeah no you're absolutely right good good point for context um from an economic standpoint i'm just looking around i'm like okay is this too much supply for the demand like, are you gonna <laughs> are you gonna sell all the rainbow toothbrushes and all the rainbow shirts and all the like? Are you saying it's more for messaging than actual sales? No, I was wondering, is this subsidized in a way where oh. somebody said mm. where somebody said, "Hey, um, whatever doesn't sell, ship it back. Don't worry, mm. we'll deal with the excess, but we're gonna dump off a load of everything." It's like. How many containers full from China had all this stuff? And, and in a way, yes, messaging. Because it's like, okay, did y'all leave any room for non-rainbow products? Like, are there any non... Is there anything in this store that doesn't have a rainbow slapped on it? Because if it's only a month, let's just say come July, and you got to shift gears and put all the flag stuff. America, I don't even think they're going to have that much American flag stuff as they had rainbow flag stuff. So I'm just wondering, like... All the stuff that didn't sell, now you're sending it back to the central distributor and then, you know, net 30, net 60. Like, how do, you know what I'm saying? Like, all the leftover. I'm just looking at it like, okay, did somebody just say, don't worry about it if the shit don't sell. I just want it plastered. That. That again, sometimes, and this isn't to butter your bread, but... Do I need to put this full I was going to say, that is a full foil moment. It blows my mind that you had that thought, because I didn't think of that at it's all. It's just, I mean, from a supply demand, it's like... I get it from where the concept that you're coming from, from a business aspect. I'm like, what... May, okay, let's just say maybe. Bro, let's, just, uh-huh. let's hypothesize mm-hmm. that Target has a subsidiary of, of Target where they maybe did this. They have a sister company that puts the money forward on everything being the rainbow... <laughs> And then sends it to their stores because they're a sister store. And then when they're done with it, they just kind of take it back and what reuse it, ship it I, somewhere I mean, else. Probably goes to other countries. Like I don't know if shit gets. Well, um, how many countries are that friendly to rainbow flags? No, like if you like, for example, like for example, you know when a um 
you make uh <laughs> let's say it's a world series right let's say it's a world series it's like astros versus dodgers or whatever they're gonna print up shirts like dodgers champions and astros champions because you got to get them made ahead of time the cheaters champs last chance last week with the dodgers in town were ridiculous mm. they won't let it go yeah well you know fuck it el que no tranza no avanza <laughs> el que no arriesga no gana um so those mess up shirts the leftovers sometimes they get sent to like third world countries like you know pick one and you'll just have random kids maybe they just donate them or you know it, it's like they get rid of it maybe they end up at the border like the like the Biden, Biden shirts. shirts did yeah <laughs> that'd be funny it's fucked up well that came from an lg allegedly came from yeah. an lgbtq yeah for that photo where you had all the people waiting across it wearing Biden shirts and shit um that blues clues thing too did you catch the uh blm hand on the mic mm, no you missed it it's dude i am so, okay you missed it? Come on. I think I did miss it, but look. I'm curious, all right? So Blue's Clues, that's Nickelodeon, right? Yeah. All right, so it's probably like a production company who still... I don't know if if it's um, if that show is made directly by Nickelodeon or if it's like Nickelodeon in partnership with blah, 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 Animation Studios, mm. and they're, this is a project that they, they do together. I'm curious, in the writer's room... When they were sitting down to write a season arc or whatever of Blue's Clues, and they're like, all right, we're going to do, let's just say, 20 episodes. Um, we're going to do the first five. It's about friendship and sharing. The next five is about community. The next five is about like, um, listening to your parents or whatever. And then they have to start filling the blanks and making outlines. Okay. <sighs> Maybe this one fell under community social issues, right? We're going to do a five season chunk. I mean, a five episode chunk that's going to deal with community and um, LGBTQ. Inclusion. Yeah, what have you. Just so that the kids, I don't know what the argument would be like. So the kids could, um, look, I got my full hat. I know. Because I'm speculating, right? <laughs> At what point on the whiteboard, in the writer's room, mm -hmm. do they say, uh, okay, so now we're dealing on the uh, community social issues part. All right, let's do, what are we doing about the LGBTQ thing, uh, the trans and, and the, you know, two moms, a couple things. Uh, we'll, we'll do the setting in the parade, all right, because that's the thing. And we'll have Blue's Clue and the little kid or whoever, they're watching the parade. And then we're going to have like the host, the announcer lady. Sure. The trans person. It's like, oh, look at this flow. Look at the family. Look at the family. Yeah. It's the... They decided to write it that way so that that character can be saying all the things that need to be said, right? For the five-year-olds, right, right? Exactly. Right, right. At what point in the writer's room does someone like raise a hand like, so are they going to let us air this? Like, we're going to send the script over to the, uh, the, 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 the department, the script supervisor at Nickelodeon so they can approve this so it can get funded and sent to animation. Like... My point is, nobody raised their hand and said, hey, man, do we, can we talk about something else? Like, that's kind of pushy. Like, someone had to write in the detail, like, yeah, yeah, draw her like this. Um, maybe the microphone can have BLM on it so that we can cram in another social issue. Like, were they unknowingly being cultural Marxists? Were they un 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 unknowingly? Or No, and the reason I say unknowing, Rob, mm -hmm. and, and I'll let you take over, the reason I say unknowing is because people get indoctrinated in these colleges. A lot of people that are in these writing rooms went to like liberal arts colleges and they're liberal. Mm -hmm. They're liberal millennials and they honestly, they got the little tunnel vision. They honestly believe they don't think with rural America in mind. They don't think from what would a Trumper think about this or, or a conservative person or a Christian person. They just look at it like, well, it's the right thing to do. And we need Biden-Harris 2020. And kids need to know because maybe they haven't chose, chosen their pronoun. Maybe their uh, gender identity, yada, 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 yada. I don't know. On a production that big, you've been on several productions. Huge, small, tiny, gigantic. Medium. Medium. All, all, the, all the above. On a production size, like an animated Nickelodeon show mm -hmm. with as many 
what you would think is red tape and people like hand, like cooks in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, that's what blew me away the most, what you just said. And you, you just kind of hit it the nail on the head is that nobody said, not one person looked over at, at anyone yeah, else. At the script and was like, and said, mm, huh, I'm reading the description. This okay. probably isn't it. They're going to be like, okay, we see um, it's like exterior daytime. We see a parade, uh, uh, like a, a gay parade, basically. Uh, we see the uh, announcer holding BLM mic, and then and then it'll have the character's name, and it'll be like, "Look at this happy family, um, two moms, yada yada yada." We cut to Blue and the kid or whatever enjoying the parade from the sidewalk. Cut back to another float with two dads, blah 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 blah. So somebody has to read it. Like basically, there's probably no conservatives, no Republicans involved in this production chain. Just like the View, there's probably nobody that would say, or even a moderate for that matter. I don't think a moderate's gonna want their five year olds because at five, you know, kids grasp things and they repeat it and they keep asking questions about it. Mm hmm. And like yesterday, we were hanging out at the pool at my sister's house, uh, Memorial Day, and we got into the discussion of like, hey, are the kids gonna uh, be forced to be vaccinated because um, my niece is in public school and i'm asking my sister like <clears throat> are they gonna make them wear the mask or i'm asking my niece like hey how was it in lunch like did they have y'all separated like they had some kids facing the wall like there's just getting no social anything recess is fucked up um and like my niece is like well i kind of got used to wearing the mask and then she started breaking out from wearing the mm-hmm. mask and all this crap and <laughs> It's like, I feel like at some point, they're pushing all this stuff at once, whether it's in the CIA ad, the commercials, everything's woke. If you look at the, um, what other ads was it? The military ads, right? The one of the army. And yeah. it's, it the started in ads. California with mm-hmm. two moms, you know, and the happy music and it's animated. Arguably, the future of warfare is going to be drones and fucking ro- yeah. robot dogs, right? Just like the policing that's coming to your hood. Y'all keep wanting to defund the police. That robo dog going to get in your ass. And you're going to miss that white cop in your neighborhood. Anyway, um, it's like they're pushing all this stuff so much that the soccer moms, the suburban moms, the moderate moms, the moms that are like, hey, I don't want the vaccine passport for my kid, et cetera. Or, right. or, or, or you know, those, those beefs of... My daughter runs track. Why the fuck she got to wear a mask outside by herself? You know, that's not how Corona fucking spreads. You, you fucking, you sprinting past somebody and you, <laughs> and they, they sprinting too. <laughs> and the Corona's on their face now. Anyway, I feel like they're, they're showing their hands so much and they're pushing all these different agendas all at once everywhere to where you're going to force, you're going to, you're going to force all these women to become Republican. You're going to force all these people to have a bad taste in their mouth. Like, look, man, I walk into Target. I turn on Blue's Clues. You, everywhere you go, there's just spin, spin. Um, my, my wife, they signed her up. She got a subscription for Vanity Fair or something. I threw it in the mm. trash because they had um, some articles in there. I think they had Issa Rae very talented lady on um hbo she's on the cover and i'm just like you know perusing i'm flipping through the articles i'm trying to see what they're talking about and there's one that's about the uh the attack on the capitol mm. on on one six mm. and these people killed multiple cops and you know this is back when that was still the narrative that they killed i think even hillary clinton tweeted like they killed nine cops or she said she said in an interview these people killed nine police officers like bitch she did that at lunch Bible son. Exactly. She literally did. I, no, literally. I know. What was that about? I don't remember. It was, was it the nine, emails? Nine cops came up missing. I don't. The emails, I think, or, or something. I don't know. How many bodies? Yeah. Um. I, I'm talking all over the place. I'm I'm forgetting what kind. No, of... No, the, the Vanity Fair. So yeah. So anyway, I'm jumping around, man. But the Vanity Fair thing. I'm reading the thing and the way they word things, and it's like they did a story where they covered a group of um. I guess conservative Trump supporters from Tennessee who got some money. They rented a private jet. They uh, went out to D.C. They wanted to be a part of the um, the protests or what have you. And they're basically just systematically painting 
anybody that voted conservative, anybody that would support Trump, etc., as just like ignorant Neanderthal conspiracy theorists, QAnon, um, insurrectionists, uh, extremists, domestic terrorists, like you fucking name it. They're acting like evangelical extremists are, are the real problem. It's like, really? Is, is that what you're telling me? Because I view it differently. You know what I view people that don't... Let me, let me start with this. I remember reading a stat that people... Jesus. Listeners of podcast are, um, you know, X amount, exponentially... I'm just going to use this word as a blanket statement, smarter than those that don't. Mm-hmm. And this is how the, the article was, was kind of framed. And as we see stats of podcasts year after year trend upwards over the last, you know, five, six years especially, you, I, I feel like you're starting to see more people that are leaving the terrestrial the tra- tra- terrestrial uh-huh. legacy media and coming to YouTube, which, you know, you can find your, your holes in either direction. Podcasting, same thing. But I think it's better all for everybody that more people find long form conversation to get more facts or info or just even ideas from so that we can hopefully at some point get away from how many people are talking about what we've been talking about, but like believing it. Mm -hmm. Everything The View says, everything that, uh, you know, these uh, school boards are are doing is for the best interest of the kids, not because they're lining anybody's pockets, you know. Teachers unions. Yeah. yeah. And and I just kind of wanted to get that out there because I, what something you said just triggered how a lot of people that I know that don't listen to podcasts tend to have the worst ideas. And mm-hmm. I could be biased because I'm el podcastero. I will. But uh, I think that's true. And it's like the listener's duty almost, their civil duty to share clips and podcasts, not just this one, but other ones that you like so that you can help other people out. It seems like either they're not going out of the way to find the info because they're lazy or I don't know. Why do you think the New York Times is going out of their way to do a hit piece on Rogan? On Joe Rogan because... Once that man got with Spotify, that's when they realized, okay. And even, even Spotify's, uh, I guess, subscriptions went up. They realized... Yeah, apparently they've made more already. They made their money back. Already. Oh, and then they've made, they've made more now than they thought they would have in the entire agreement of the three years, and it hasn't even been a year yet. Yeah, that was a good investment on their part. Um, I guess, you know, New York Times and them, that's why they try to vilify and frame and do hit pieces on Joe Rogan because he's going to feature different scientists different uh journalists investigated just different people with different ideas and have these long-form discussions and it's nuanced and you know he might have somebody who may be a a journalist for the washington post who was also helping spearhead the movement that this thing may have been a a man-made bioweapon uh and now facebook lets you say talk about the lab leak theory you know they're now they're easing up on the algorithm and stuff like that um facebook's easing up on that but youtube isn't easing up on removing people that don't agree with who oh with the with the world health yeah mm. so they'll they'll take your shit down mm. well hey nihao john cena <laughs> Uh, information. Han, 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 han. That thing really took off. We talked about it on the podcast first, and I had just kind of caught wind of it, and then the, like the day after that, it was everywhere. Like on the conservative sites, James? just every, like yeah, yeah, especially the conservative nah, sites. The, I'm sure liberal yeah. media is just like, um, he made a mistake, Chingo. And when you make mistakes and you offend people, of course you're gonna, you know, backtrack a little bit. It's like it had nothing to do with the power and control the CCP has over Hollywood. It has nothing to do with the fact that Hollywood's main income is overseas. It's mm-hmm. not even domestic. It has nothing to do with the fact that the CCP has to look at your scripts and make sure you ain't saying nothing bad about China. It makes sure you ain't calling Taiwan a country. Um, John Cena got out of line and they had to spank him and he had to apologize in their language. I think they only allow like 30 movies that aren't, you know, like I guess it would be international movies into China per year. Just 30 movies. And when you go out there to do press, don't make the mistake of, of acknowledging Taiwan as a country. Don't make that mistake. Because if not, you'll be like, Ni hao, John Cena. That's wild, dude. Shishi. And it's funny because his whole shtick when he was a wrestler was like loyalty and America first kind of thing. Mm, Boy, did he lose a lot of fans. Fooled me. I didn't know he was America first. You know what? I was featured on a song with John Cena. Word? Yeah. It was an um, uh, artist named Murs, a uh, very talented artist named Murs. He has a song called like Hustle, and uh, he had John Cena on there. He did a remix. Are we on this one, or are we on the remix? 
Let the folks stop. H U S T L E Hustler. He's down by the track. Can I never so Okay, let me see if the remix is on. <laughs> but but you know I'm on the remix. E forty's on there. John Cena's on there. That's cool. Yeah, I remember. Um, I mean, he, his whole thing was also coming out to like some hip hoppy kind of stuff. He was this kind of white hip hop kind yeah, of character. Yeah, he, he rapped on a song. With yeah, us. He, and then he got really got into the music after that shit kind of really took off. I don't. I'm sure he was always a hip hop head of some sort, but. Yeah, man, I don't know. It, it kind of leads into the next kind of non sequitur I had, and that was just people, when they get to a certain size, you got to just play the game, right? Yeah. And that's exactly what he was doing. Yeah, because um, like my boy Joe, we were talking about that, and he's like, what would have happened if he didn't apologize? And it's like every producer, every studio, every investor uh, I- involved with the success of this film and sunk some money in this film no like he there's there is no what if like no 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 no. you can't stick to your guns on this one yeah and contractually i'm sure there's something in there that no what we say goes you're talking about not you're not not just talking about universal you're talking about the large one of the largest franchises in movie history Mm -hmm. it's the fast and the furious yeah and and asia being one of probably the biggest chunk of the viewership and the profits i found the song right oh dope okay after the ad right here um, but yeah, shout out to Murs, man. Um, when he got married in Tucson, uh, he wore a pair of Chingo boots uh, that, that I gifted him. That's dope. And With the swoosh? He, uh, I don't think that pair had the swoosh. But um, what, here it is. Murs featuring E-40, Chingo Bling, John Cena. Further define the term hustler. Got to the hustlers between my booty cheeks. The same old clothes for weeks. We gritty and sour. Now he wrecked it, but he should still finding new songs a year he, he heard. He should have done it in Mandarin. He's like, Ni hao, John Cena, she <laughs> shit, and han han. Dude, I wish there was a video of that, like an actual music video that we could play uh, on the on the fucking Instagram. Yeah. Like how it started and how it's going. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. That's wild. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and here we are. And here we are. <laughs> how long ago was that? When was that? Oh, man. That is such a long time ago when that came out. Ah. I, I didn't know who uh, I didn't know who Merz was at the time, and um, I, I was uh, I had a lot going on at the time, and they were like, "Yeah, this dude wants to get you on a verse," and you know, E Forty's on the song, John Cena's on the song. I'm like, really? <laughs> and we charged him too much, and he paid it, and I was like, "Fuck, this dude must be somebody if he was able to afford that." And then later, I, later I started getting feedback from people, and they're like, "Yo." I heard of you from the uh, from from you did a song with Murs, man. Or they'd be like, "Yo, yo, you're blowing up, man. You got a song with Murs." And I'm like, "Shit!" I had to like call the dude back, like, "Hey, man, I'll send your money back." I didn't know you were popping. Uh, I didn't know you were popping like that. He's that's like, nah. cool. He's like, "No, nah, don't worry about it." That's dope. Um, moving back into our uh, show notes here. I know. What do we got as far as? Did you see the video of Biden f- speaking of? Uh, what did she call it? bungling something his um little speech i forgot what or i didn't know what it was in context to but pbs hour had a little fucking clip of it here i'll show it to you real quick he forgot these simple lines you know and you you talk life, about life liberty and yeah et cetera. yeah we hold these truths to be self-evident but all men and women are created equal endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights including life liberty etc he just pauses. He looks over. How long was that pause? I wonder. Yeah, right. Uh, he just kind of looks over, like, "Where am I? What? What's going on?" I mean, I'm pretty sure he's reading off a teleprompter. No, 
I mean, he was looking down like he was reading off something, but it maybe lost his place. Mm. I don't know. I feel like... It's <sighs> funny that that's an I want a little bit more context. Yeah. What, what are the comments on that? I'm sure a lot of people got offended because a lot of people, you know, cognitive bias, you know, folks like myself who aren't fans of him, we're going to see something like that and just be like, what the fuck? See, look, he makes a mockery out of everything good, honorable, and noble. Uh, someone else said, oh, Joe... Somebody say, you know the thing. <laughs> they say he's a bona fide son of Satan. See what I'm saying? Some people yeah. like took too much offense. Yeah. That's why they be calling uh, conservatives snowflakes. Right. Look, I love how they pretend he is speaking to a full auditorium. Meanwhile, it's an empty hangar or something. He hasn't a clue. Doesn't even know where he is, what year he's in. Well, Some, that, that kind of makes sense. Someone said uh, this from a man who every time the doorbell rings, he runs to microwave, to the microwave. <laughs> oh, how fitting. He forgot the pursuit of happiness part because they're trying so hard to take that part, to take that away from everyone. Yeah, I don't know. Let me get my tinfoil hat <laughs> and we speculate. See, check this out. Um, you know how I sometimes look at things like the target thing. Uh -huh. Like, okay, supply and demand. Mm -hmm. Where are all the leftovers going to go? Did y'all order this many? Or like... When y'all, when it was time to manufacture the stuff, like, do y'all need this much variety of uh, rainbow stuff? So when it comes to this, it's like, okay, who wrote the speech? Did the speech say, et cetera? Or did he go off script? Did, like, I'm just really curious because sometimes the way people perceive things, it's always interesting to be like, like, say, for example, um, let's say, let's say on stage, I spilled my drink and I make a joke out of it. Somebody might be like, "Hey, uh, do you do that every show?" I like my favorite part was when you spill the drink and then you say the thing. Yeah, and they might not know that it was an accident. Are you saying he's improving this? No, I'm. I, I mean, I'm just wondering. Like, did the teleprompter go too fast? And he, 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 he was loose with it. Got off off script. Did the script say etc.? Is it a concerted effort to undermine you know america's right to a pursuit of happiness are they is, in other words is it an evil doing like was it done on purpose to be like no probably not he's an old man that doesn't remember shit so you're saying he got he he got off the teleprompter he got off of his wagon completely so he just stopped reading he i think he's just his i think the gears just stopped turning he didn't know what he he didn't know what was coming next. He's like, "Am I getting off stage?" I think in that moment he looked over and thought, "Am I am supposed I to walk off stage? Yeah, or am I supposed to finish this line?" I think et cetera is the right thing to say, and that was it. Well, it, maybe if we had a little bit more context, I know. We, we could see if like he paused for five seconds and then he said, "Pursuit of happiness," which I doubt. Yeah, he probably just moved on. Yeah, he's like, "Yeah, the thing." Um, <laughs> you know the thing. What was that? What was that? Oh, dude yesterday memorial day right somehow j-lo came up because we were talking about like man a-rod selling makeup and yeah, he looks like he's wearing a lot of it too so they have t twins right or j-lo has twins with uh i think mark anthony and i think somebody somebody at the family get together was like uh, is is the is the boy the brother is her son autistic because you know they always show the little girl but, you know, they never show the boy. Or, so, or she says that uh, he has a lot of anxiety. Hmm. And um, something about, like, when they do show her son, the sister's there near him just to kind of, you know what I mean, make sure everything's cool. And I don't want to, like, speculate about, sure. kid, you know, a, someone's child and what may be going on. Respectfully so. But somebody said oh kind of like kamala has to do with, with joe yeah. <laughs> like, like you gotta be within arm's reach totally. I'm like okay joe like you see the dr jill is right there like handlers yeah like you need to have handlers and and pobrecito like i feel real bad talking about someone's cognitive decline because we all have parents and grandparents and we're all hopefully gonna get to an old age one day and that's not something i wish on nobody and it starts to fall under the medical category sure and so i I don't wish that on nobody. Um, it sucks that the Democratic Party gave us this guy and old girl as the option. Like, yeah. For whatever reason, they're the ones on a ticket. 
So I don't think it was ideal. No, and maybe we can go a little bit beyond that and go a little woo-woo here. Oh. And, and let's say that, you know, our grandparents also didn't, you know, sign the 1994 crime bill. Yeah, that too. Um, and, and maybe even go as far as to say, like, if you believed in something like the law of reciprocity of what you put out is what you get, this old man is just getting what he put out there. Mm. That's dark, but it's reality, you know, okay. and in the comments, I saw somebody say, <laughs> that's karma for the crime bill. <laughs> something like, yeah, something like that. Right now they were like, he was probably thinking about who's this lady I keep seeing that's measuring the drapes when I, every, every time I turn the corner, <laughs> I was like, God damn. I'm talking about karma. Yeah. Because let's be real. I mean, this, that's, I, I said a year, we're halfway through 2021. If he makes it to 2022 as commander in chief, I will be surprised. Well, how many days until Fauci gets fired or has to step down? As the highest paid government official. I don't think he makes it to winter. He won't make it to the winter time. No. Winter's coming, but not for him. All my listeners at RPT, uh, leave a comment. Send us a message on the Patreon app. Mm -hmm. um, start placing your bets because they not letting him do all the mainstream media stuff as much. They were parading him around. As much. He used to be on multiple all the time. times a day. All the time. Yeah. All the time. Oh, we have St. Dr. Fauci here. He's going to tell us. He's going to opine and tell us what to do. And, and, and you know, all oh, the American people, blah, 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 blah. I mean, his media schedule made it seem like he's a fucking, he has clones. He was everywhere all he day. He was on the Breakfast Club and so on. He was everywhere. Uh, uh, Dr. Fauci, uh, I mean, Eugenio Derbez, he was able to do interviews with everybody. They about to reel him in. They about to pull him back before they throw him under the bus. And you saw The View was trying to defend him. They were just like, you know, what do they want him to do? Be a, 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 an oracle? He's just a scientist. And, you know, he's adjusting with the facts. Rob? You know who else has a lot of media? Our boy G. Santis. Oh, yeah? And uh, he, a, lot, a lot of people don't like him, man. A lot of people don't like him, yeah. yeah. But he said something here that I've, I've mentioned before about uh, people leaving blue states for red states that, mm. that I had happened to have said, and, I, and you were like, you played devil's advocate a little bit, so I want you to listen to this okay. and tell me what you think. See if you agree with him on this one. All of you have this problem. And the problem is people from New York and New Jersey and California and Michigan, they're leaving their states, mm -hmm. and they're going to your states. Your Florida seen a huge impact of migration out of the out of these blue states. Now, my only fear for all of you, and let you start first, Governor DeSantis, is that they may bring the liberal policies with them. So it's interesting with Florida, like the media at the beginning of this said Florida's bad. And I think it's because they wanted to damage Trump in Florida, they wanted to damage me. So they just kept saying it was bad. And even though the facts didn't say, like literally last April, they're saying Florida's doing worse than New York. New York was like 10 times worse. And so I think what it did is the people that buy those phony narratives for these, these media, they, they probably aren't coming to Florida, but most people see through it. But the people that see through it, they think like us. And so I think a lot of these people are coming. Uh, I think they're registering as Republicans overwhelming. And I also have come across a lot of people who, quite frankly, were Democrats. The lockdowns turned them into Republicans yeah. because they say, I cannot fathom. Mm -hmm. I was a, people say I was a Democrat because of education and I'm in California and they're locking my kids out of school. I come to Florida. They're in school. People are free. People are happy. So I think this whole process has caused some people to reevaluate some of their prior commitments. Mm -hmm. And if you have a political party that puts the interest of teachers unions over the interest of kids being able to just access an education at all, that tells you all you need to know about the modern Democrat Party. Mm -hmm. well yeah, said. absolutely. Same, yeah. same here. Yeah, I, and, and I agree with it. And I've had uh, more and more people actually uh, hit me up on my personal at Rob GTV on Instagram telling me how happy they are that they left. A lot of them, Calif most of them California. I would say like 90% of them. Uh, Waco, El Paso, Dallas. Oh, they moved to, to moved, Waco? N yeah, moved to Waco, moved to El Paso, moved to Dallas. Um, no Houstonians yet, but just other parts of Houston, or other parts of Texas, rather, from California. And they're mm. just like, I wish we could have done this sooner kind of thing. What, what, are they, what Do they give details? What are they like? What do they like? Mm -hmm. uh, they like that their families, op their family can be free and feel like an open family again. You know, they can do things that, at, whether they're home or they're out, and they can just live their lives. Basically, they've all had this. It was the same common theme. Did they say what part of Cali they're from? Uh, the most recent one was Inglewood. Inglewood. Okay, uh, Inglewood. That, that's L.A. County. That's by LAX. The reason I ask mm -hmm. is because some parts of California are very red. So, you know, rural, right, uh, right. Your, your Bakersfield, I mean, or I guess Orange County, just different 
um i don't know if oxnard you know a lot of places i'm going to yeah um shout out alejandra that was one that was uh, she was telling me last night and uh, she just loves the show and, and a lot of people man a lot of people are just moving they don't specify from where or maybe i just don't ask but i would think that uh, well, let's just say that you're in a pocket like you're talking about where you're in this one secluded very outlier red pocket but the rest of it is blue it's almost like it's not really a red pocket, right? Like you, your your little community is not going to have any say so when it comes to big ordinances or orders mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah, I guess it varies by county and stuff like that. But but anyway, that that's why I'm asking. Like yeah. in other words, if you're in a freer part, like you don't live in downtown LA. Yeah. Let's just say you're in the middle, like you're somewhere in the middle. However, however, I know Governor Newsom though, like he had Fresno down as like a red county hmm. meaning um y'all can't y'all can't open up remember when newsom went down mm-hmm. there with george lopez and had a uh, lunch or whatever um any chance you caught um mayor adler on rogan who was that the mayor of austin oh, he was on rogan last week yeah oh shit yeah man i thought ha- i was gonna send it to you what happened bro it, it, it was um it was man how do i say this it wasn't bad it was it was a good episode i actually enjoyed listening to the episode he he barely not barely he pushed him a little bit on the what happened on the you getting caught out of town kind of thing when he told everybody to stay put Mm -hmm. he said and this is what he said and i didn't read the the full story to see if it's true but he was already out of town when the cdc and the federal government had changed guidelines okay so instead of saying that he tried to just sweep like try to just cover up that he wasn't already out of town and was just telling people what you know passing the orders yeah. along kind of thing uh-huh. and he, he fucked up he said i fucked up I, I didn't take i didn't manage that properly mm-hmm. um my bad but the rest of the episode pretty fucking entertaining not, not entertaining but interesting talk a lot about the homeless crisis he yeah gave, what do you say about that he gave houston a lot of credit uh, of how it when it comes to ho- the homeless in texas and big cities no one has done it and does it like Houston because for decades they've worked on this plan with HUD, the uh, what is it, the urban development, uh, housing, housing, urban, urban development, development. Yeah. Um, and just in general, the plan of, of the city of Houston is is what other cities, including Austin, are trying to replicate as far as taking care of you know veterans first. It, it was the move, and then getting the right people in place to take care of the the rest of the homeless. It was it was pretty interesting. I, I enjoyed it. I'm I'm sure people shit on it for other reasons. Maybe it oh. went over my head, but it was very listenable. It was only like an hour and a half too. He wasn't on some Lefty Larry shit. No, not that I remember. Like nothing really stuck out. Um, he didn't push him on like. Well, I'm gonna go listen to it. But yeah, like, go listen to it. But he, he did say that Newsom was blaming. Uh, he was saying that he Mayor Adler was sending their homeless to California. That's what he said. He yeah, said, we're gonna send them to Cali. Yeah, but he was like, that's not true at all. And then Rogan was like, oh, you mean that guy lied? You know, what a shocker. Oh, so Newsom was saying yeah. Austin sending us their homeless. Yeah, and and then at Mayor Adler from Austin was like, like, no, we no, didn't. Yeah, your mind. No, because Austin has their fair share of homeless. Austin's like a little L.A. So I'm going to go listen to it because I'm curious if Rogan pushed him on like defunding the police. Basically, all these extreme Mm -hmm. radical leftist ideas like uh, defunding police, the homelessness issue. How are they tackling that? Does he view it as an addiction and mental illness issue? Or is he saying it's like a houseless, uh, like a home shortage, rent is too expensive and people just got down on their luck and can't get back on their feet? That that was a big one. Down to the luck, can't get back on their feet. That's, that was his excuse. That was a big. That was a big part of it. But he that was, he was saying that's what the homeless people are. That's what a lot of it was. Yeah, he said a lot of it is people that have. Um, you got to go back and listen to it, and maybe we can rap about it afterwards. Because I need actually want to go back. Because when you said defend the police, if he did, he didn't say anything of significance that stuck out to me, or maybe I just don't remember because I listened to so much different stuff. Yeah. But um, yeah, and a lot of it was that people that get down on their luck. Um, and then something else strikes, a natural disaster or something, or a pandemic, then have a harder time to get back on their feet. And apparently the numbers aren't that big. I think you said, let's just say for round numbers, it was like 6,000 homeless. Isn't a little bit, that's a lot. But when you talk about uh, LA, it's it's tens of thousands of homeless people. So, And then Houston's also a ton, but it's a, it's a much bigger city, much bigger population. Um, but he did say a lot of like, just people down on the luck. And there he's he's actually hmm. one of the big projects is that austin is working with a, a chain of or former previous hotels and motels and they're turning them into shelters of sorts and uh, homes for these people that are down on their luck and the whole initiative is to get them working and back on their feet and out of these renovated hotels hmm. yeah the plan sounds good you know yeah, everything good sounds good good luck with that if you if you're telling yourself that most of these folks are just down on their luck yeah and they're not you know, having, you know, very bad mental health issues, mental illness issues, um, 
you know schizophrenia just a lot yeah. of untreated stuff their families aren't really taking care of them addiction some of these folks don't want to stay in the shelters because they don't let them shoot up or mm -hmm. smoke smoke that dope hit, hit a little toke of the fentanyl yeah you know good old china's fentanyl so oh but yeah i'll send it to you listen to it tell me what you think about it um it's being that it wasn't even half as long as most most rogan's kind of tells you either he had a heart out for whatever reason he's mr mary might be important and busy or they just couldn't get deep into the defunding the police and mm. the other issues social issues i don't know huh just my take on it yeah I, I don't live in austin i don't know how good or bad of a job he's doing however from the outside looking in i feel like it's just too left yeah too much too much blue yeah <laughs> Like, if you did a man on the street out there about Memorial Day, I'm sure you'd hear a lot about colonialism and imperialism and America bad, you know, 169 pro 16, Project good, cultural Marxism great. Yeah, you man. Know. I mean, it, the, with the school that's, I mean, it's a great school, right? What is it? UT? UT Austin? Or just school in general. And I bring this up because um, I was listening to a random clip, clip on YouTube of uh, Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful from Shark Tank, and uh, Mike Rowe dirty jobs you know and they were talking about somebody sent in a question about school like what what is like measurable success you know to people like young people coming up right now the the 20 somethings right now and, and and younger if you were to be presented and i'll present this to you and tell me what you think about it right now at 41 if you're being presented a road two roads to go on in your life and you're 18 19 you know 21 or whatever and it's go to school get your four-year degree uh because you need to become an engineer or a doctor or a lawyer or what have you mm -hmm. or become a welder plumber whatever the road is never become a tradesman and a businessman and entrepreneur those are never said really it's always go to school get your four-year degree and become one of those other things and they kind of broke it down of how what exactly is like the what is prestigious about having that degree why is it that we put so much prestige on those degrees and I'm, i'll put that to you and you can tell me what you think man that's a very good question um I mean, obviously, it's it's been. Uh, I mean, you know, I think there's a lot of honor in being a, like a physician and, and knowing how to, you know, cure people and treat people. I think you know that's an easy argument there. Um, lawyer, engineer, a lot of those things are important as well. And whether you have immigrant parents or anybody, you know, they want their kids to be like have a, you know, quote unquote good profession like mm -hmm. that right when you're working in the ac right what they don't know is that a lot of these lawyers are having a hustle non-stop because it's a whole bunch of it's like 1.3 million lawyers in america and you get out of school typically i think the number they gave was like 60 to 80 roughly average yeah and then you once you factor in the debt uh once you factor in like I think the main issue is when you just go get like a liberal arts thing, like myself, where it's like, oh, business administration, concentration of marketing. And it's like, yeah, I'm going to go do show business. Yeah. Right. Um, maybe, maybe part of the thing is we haven't put enough emphasis and uh, I guess honor and praise upon the trades. Like, for example, my 12 year old, mm -hmm. I tell her all the time, start thinking about what kind of stuff you like. Or willing to learn, you ain't gotta like it, you know. Whether it's shit, it don't hurt to know how to do nails and know how to do hair and know how to do some other shit and maybe even go have a piece of paper from somewhere because you want a talent stack, mm -hmm. you want to have useful skills, you want to like they should have never took trades out of schools. Um, at the pop up, uh, two days ago, Gabe stopped by. Oh, shout out, shout out to Gabe, and we had a convo. We we're talking about like. How he knows how to weld, he knows how to paint cars, um, you know, woodwork. Mm -hmm. He could smoke your brisket, like you know, some manly shit. Yeah. And I'm just like, man, we need to hang out, man, because uh, <laughs> you know, I got to do the landscape in the front of my house. I'm like, you know how to do landscape. And I told him, I was like, man, whatever projects you got coming up, let me go be an apprentice. I was like, you do electrical? He's like, a little bit. No, and he's like, he was like, uh, I'm like. Ain't that shit dangerous? He's like, well, if you're doing a 110, you know, it's just a little shock. And right. I'm, like, I'm like, what? He's like, you know, 220, te quedas pegado. You know, you're <laughs> you going to be stuck there. Uh, they're going to have to come kick you to get you off. But um, anyway, I think we need to promote the value in useful skills, a good solid trade, because you're not when you go learn how to do some of these things, you're not in as much debt. You're definitely in demand. And you're already knowing how to make, you're already able to make money 
pretty soon. Yeah. You know, if you're a carpenter, plumber, whew, boy, plumbers made some good money recently with all these pipes that busted. Um, so that's a huge blessing in today's day and age, man, to be able to make some bread, take care of your family, not be in a whole bunch of school debt is genius. So there's a, I think there's 11 million millionaires in the United States now. And the vast majority of those, I think it was like 75% or above, or 75%-ish, made their millions off of just like trades and, and regular work. Teachers, uh, welders, you know, entrepreneurs, that kind of thing. Is that from that thing. book, uh, Millionaire Next Door? No, okay. but it's a similar book that I read the synopsis for. Mm-hmm. And now I'm regurgitating like I read the whole book. No, but which, which one is it? Uh, I have it right here in a tab. I'll pull it up in a second. But it, and the whole thing was that a lot of people think that the thing is that the misconception is that these people inherited their money, they hit some kind of jackpot, whatever, whatever. And really, it's just the people that reach those, you know, your assets and your cash is more than the debt that you have or whatever equals a million more it makes you a millionaire. They just knew how to use and allocate their money better than the other person. And yeah. that's typically, and that's the biggest thing. And I was talking to Don about this this morning when, on the way back from dropping the kids off. We're just talking about, you know, People that are in the rough spots, not the homeless, but, the, but them also, a lot of them just didn't know how to manage their money. They ran into addiction. They ran into a lot of problems. And had we been taught about money in school, and we've beaten this till we're blue in the face, I, us, everybody would be better off because you'd have a better understanding of how powerful these little soldiers, these little money soldiers could be walking out into the real world. But we don't get none of that. It's like the rich dad, poor dad type of concept. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, man that could be a whole nother podcast just talking about finances and stuff but um oh it was uh everyday millionaires mm-hmm. by chris hogan that was a gentleman that was uh on the ramsey network for a while yeah there's one called millionaire next door where they point stuff out like that and one thing you mentioned is it's not how much money you make it's what you do with it mm-hmm. right because you can make a million dollars a year but if you spend in 1.5 well shit you in a hole <laughs> <laughs> you know you ever read uh think and grow rich I think like one time, Napoleon Hill. Bro, they're making it into a movie. Okay. And what are some of the main... I probably got to go back and reread it. I need to go back and read it too, but it, it, he lays out these principles basically about money and mm-hmm. how to utilize it and it, just kind of what a lot of these millionaire maker, millionaire uh, um, um, analyst, analytics kind of books mm-hmm. lay out. I actually want... I saw it for an ad and I wanted to go back and read it because I also read it when I was like early days in college. Mm-hmm. But... um. And I saw the trailer for the movie, which I'll send to you as well. And it looked good. Like, I think these are concepts, especially now coming out of this pandemic, that people more than ever are, they, they know how hard it can be to be an entrepreneur because if you're a small business shut down or whatever, whatever, right? But above all else, when you're not beholden to, you know, the corporations who you're just another number, they're going to let you go or whatever. You, I think people are more geared to the, towards that now. Like, I'm going to do shit for me because I want to rely on me and my family and I don't want to rely on just being another number and getting let go or whatever mm-hmm. so yeah some security especially now man with this inflation and stagflation and all this other crap yeah so we shall pray for our country uh mighty soul's not recording okay she's uh, out she took penny so we're gonna her and i are gonna record tomorrow joe's coming at 12 yeah all right uh i got one more thing you remember that cop that got um suspended for making that vi- that tiktok making fun of lebron mm-hmm uh so he got fired what was the uh, what was he saying on his TikTok where he's clowning LeBron? Do you want to, do you remember it? Is he the one where he's like, oh, uh, next time I approach a situation, sorry, yeah, don't, don't he's be like, too he, rough. he calls, he's like, uh, LeBron, yeah, I have a perpetrator, whatever, right? So he goes through that whole thing. So he was suspended at first, and then I put on administrative leave, right? And then this was um, like what the last thing we we all heard from him as far as publicly after he was let go here recently this past not too long ago. Where is it at? Mother of God. There it is. Mm-hmm. So, okay. you know what, though? I can't think of a more fitting way to celebrate the memory of a career criminal than to have a shootout in the middle of a public street. That that was his video. Wait, that's what got him kicked off? Yeah, so the they said, the, the de- department said that uh, for continuous policy violations... They let him go. That's all they said. So, so he did the LeBron one, yeah, and didn't get in trouble for that. Yeah, he got put on. He got suspended. So he got suspended for that, and mm-hmm. then he dropped this one mm-hmm. talking about the shootout in front of the George Floyd Memorial mm-hmm. and then in Minneapolis. Yeah, and then it's like, all right, bitch, yeah. that's strike three. Yeah, 
Okay, damn. All right. Well, sound like if you want to be a cop, you don't. You shouldn't be on TikTok. Is what what they kind of trying to say? Yeah, right. Um, yeah, that's a tricky one because I don't. I'm not well versed in uh, like when you get hired as a cop. I don't know if they tell you all the rules. Like, hey, dude, you got to be hella quiet about stuff. Yeah. On your social media, you can't <clears throat> say certain things. What if he was like, yeah, but if I, I mean, if nurses can dance during a pandemic, can I just make a TikTok during an event? <laughs> I'm just talking shit. Yeah. I guess they looked at it like, um, that's mean and insensitive and you're going against the narrative and, you know, police interaction, um, I guess relations, police relationship relations in certain communities, you know, you just stir in the pot. And then now if they, if somebody needs back, um, if they make a call for a cop and you show up. <laughs> And you the TikTok guy, and we know you're anti-LeBron. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm trying to figure out what the argument would be. Yeah. Um, it's okay. I know you're a little cloudy because you got to pee. Yeah, right? <laughs> but I, what I'm saying is like, in other words, here's what I'm trying to say. If when he signed up for the job and they gave him a little pamphlet of like conduct or like rules and shit, you know, hey man, welcome to the job. Certain things you can't do, can't say. And maybe that was in their little like job like human resources pamphlet and maybe they're just like sorry dude we just gotta stick to the thing like we love you but page three paragraph five article seven that's what you did bro so we kind of have to i don't know but uh all right chingo where can listeners find us three days a week uh patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales I kind of want to double down. I kind of want to have way more content, way more shows. Maybe, I mean, I think me and Marisol are wanting to go live on YouTube on Wednesdays. Just, you know, figure out the whole super chat and that whole, like, live chatting mm -hmm. comment thing. Um, you know, that's a thing. But uh, patreon.com forward slash Red Piltamales is where we want to spoil the fans, um, get the community going. And our show is powerful, not because of two dudes in a garage. Mm. It's because of you guys, you guys out there putting in the work, you know, representing for your community, um, caring about your country, being concerned and not falling for the okie doke and knowing that people like on The View, they're not going to give you the real spill. So thank you guys so much for supporting, being a member of the TIA, the Tamal Intelligence Agency. We got new merch coming. Um, and yeah, man, we're going to pray for our country, pray for our communities, pray for our leaders and, and just hope that we can get through this. And they don't just destroy America from within. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. That is all. Se acabó. Se acabó. Chapulín Colorado, este cuento se ha acabado. Sass.